Tower defense games come in many different flavors, from balloon popping to zombie blasting. Diplomacy is not an option adds a new flavor, peasant crushing. Yes, the peasants are revolting, also they're rebelling. Help, help, I'm being repressed, bloody peasant! And you've been tasked by the king to put them in their place. You must grow your small fife into a full kingdom of its own to hold them back. When it comes to advances in technology and gaming, tower defense games have grown in size, scale, and complexity, bringing hundreds of thousands of enemies on screen at any given time. It was this newfound epic scale that has really sparked my interest in tower defense games again. There was something about being a tyrannical medieval ruler that really spoke to me on a spiritual level. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Diplomacy is not an option has an excellent variety of gameplay. It's part city planner, it's part tower defense, and part real-time strategy game. The gameplay goes through these sorts of phases. Planning out your initial building placement for resources like wood and food, sending out your troops to scout and cut down any enemies encamped nearby, identifying where you want to place walls and towers in preparation for the inevitable hordes which will descend upon you eventually. A lot of this is dictated by the landscape. Finding choke points and taking advantage of them is part of the joy of this game. You may not be 300 Spartans, but you absolutely can make your own hot gates. It's so hot right now. Every few in-game days, the peasants or zombies or even the king's own royal army will send hordes of enemies to evict you from your literal ivory tower. These fights start as very manageable, but quickly escalate to screen covering masses with seemingly the entire nation trying to take you down. The only thing standing between you and a very unpleasant dirt nap is your troops. The game has a kind of apathy towards both your peasant enemies, your people, and even your own troops. Many strategy games will build an attachment between you and your soldiers, be it something like XCOM or Chaos Gate letting you customize or name each individual soldier, or the Total War games where maybe naming individual soldiers would be a bit too far, but having favorite generals is pretty normal. It adds to the pain of defeat as you watch your favorite characters get killed or captured. In Diplomacy is not an option, everyone is expendable. But you know who isn't expendable? Yes, you. So don't forget to like and subscribe and hydrate some more. You know you should. As your troops don't level up or grow as people and develop relationships and hobbies, they are merely speed bumps to slow down the monsters at the gates. Lose your entire army? Not a problem. Fresh-faced townsfolk will be ready to take their place in the morning. Sacrificing everyone and everything in order to see another dawn is not entirely against the ethos of the game. It will, however, doom you in the long run. As soon as one horde shows up, another is already just a few short days away. Take too long in defeating one lot? That's a lot less time to repair walls, replant fields, and bury the dead. It can be relentless. The waves of enemies emulating their namesake, each one washing over your lands and people, and there's always another one not too far behind. You might be able to tell already, I really do love this gameplay loop. Developing your city, expanding your resources, increasing your headcount, training up your troops, building defenses, and well, defending. If all else fails, you can always use some magic to even the odds against your foes. Spells are available after you build an obelisk and really rewards you for exploration, as destroying enemy encampments will drop gems and the gems are the currency for casting magic. What would usually be a simple switch in enemy type when you select zombies instead adds a whole new dynamic to the gameplay. As well as fighting the undead as they arrive at your walls, you can thin out their herds ahead of time by sending gravediggers around the map to bury the piles of bodies that have spawned in at the start, before they turn into zombies. It adds a fun little twist to what could easily have been just another round of defense. Which brings me to some of the other mechanics at play. Food and housing determines your population size, so how many workers and soldiers you can draft into your employ. Corpses spread diseases, so you'll need medic tents and hospitals to treat the sick, and grave diggers to bury the dead. There's also an in-game economy and market, 
In an area with tons of trees but few stone, you can always trade for it on the market and keep a steady supply of resources coming in and out. These mechanics are present and most need to be engaged with, but they never felt overwhelming. I always felt like I was pretty close to the core objective of defense. The times they were most felt was when the enemy raid took out some houses or a large resource operation, or God forbid, a warehouse full of supplies, and I would need to deal with the ramifications of my failure to defend. It added these micro stakes alongside the main stake of your central tower. Also, protect your graveyards, as if they're destroyed, the dead, well, they don't stay dead. Beyond the gameplay elements, I'm sure you've been taking in the visuals. They're pleasant, they're solid. It's easy to tell at a glance who's a worker and who's an undertaker. I enjoy this art style. It's easy going, it's not too busy. It's quite cartoony, and usually cartoony art styles can temper my interest in a game a bit, but it wasn't a big hurdle for me here. This art style allows for large crowds of enemies to not just become a horrible mess of indecipherable details. The sound design is solid. For a lot of games, I'll end up with my own music or a podcast on, but here I enjoyed the soundscape of the game well enough to mostly stick with it, which is probably the best praise I can give it. The sound cues were very clear, letting me know at a listen whether I had a horde or cavalry on their way. All things that make the game easier to play by not forcing you to rely on the visuals all the time. So did I find many issues in the game? A couple, but nothing major and nothing game-breaking. The first few startups of the game took, I want to say, 15 or 20 minutes for me, and my PC is no slouch. Long early load times are apparently common. It is frustrating, but these got quicker over time. I've racked up close to 30 hours in the game at this point, and at least two or three of those are me just leaving the computer on with the game running so that I wouldn't have to deal with the load times when I came back after stepping away for a little while. But my last few sessions, the load times were less than a minute. Not too sure if that's been an update or if that's just something that happens over time. I don't know, but it became less of an issue for me the more I played. Minor AI issues for your citizens is common. Builders would often build themselves into inaccessible areas, or workers would leave their place of work into a dead end rather than the clear path out. To rescue the former, it would tend to involve smashing down the thing they just built. It's frustrating, but at least the game highlights buildings and workers inaccessible to wherever they want to go, and you don't just have a whole bunch of builders built into the wall like Attack on Titan. This icon does also bug out sometimes, as far as I can tell, where it would pop up above buildings which had no discernible issues. So um, be wary of that, but for the most part, it's a helpful feature to combat this. The developers do recommend leaving plenty of space around buildings for movement, but some resource locations don't allow for this. You'll soon figure out what you can and cannot get away with when it comes to building placement. Elsewhere, the soldier AI is sand-eatingly dumb. The main issue here is aggro, and is an issue more so for melee troops. Place a line of spearmen behind a rapidly decaying wall ready to hold off the assault, forget to put them in defensive stance, and yes, they'll run around the entire perimeter of your base to try and reach those enemies. If the particular enemy who aggroed them dies before the troops make it to them, they might just end up stood in the middle of nowhere doing nothing. Really frustrating, especially if the enemies have already breached. Yes, this can be resolved by remembering to click a button, but your troops do seem a little bit too keen to run a marathon to engage the enemy, rather than waiting for them to come to them. All in all, manageable issues that aren't uncommon to anyone who's ever played a strategy game before. They will just catch you out if you're a bit tired or you're just not on your A game. So overall, I really liked Diplomacy is not an option. Varied gameplay loop, clean visuals, and a compelling, addictive, engaging core makes it an easy recommend for any fan of strategy games or even newcomers to the genre. It's pretty welcoming, easy to learn, hard to master, all the mechanics are pretty straightforward, you'll pick them up pretty quickly, and soon learn the most efficient ways to manage things like resources and base growth. 
even the minor AI frustrations don't hold it back. They can add to the experience almost. Instead of commanding a well-organized and drilled militia, it can feel like herding bees. Bees? And there's a particular joy to how messy the game gets at times. It makes me extra thankful for the pause button so I can stop, gather myself, queue up a bunch of actions to hopefully get me out of whatever tricky situation I've gotten myself into. This game is a lot of fun. Usually for these reviews, depending on the game, I'll have a playtime closing in on like 10 hours. This game has gobbled up my free time and kept me hostage for almost 30. Before I even began to put pen to paper or finger to key, that, that sounds kind of gross. I think that was a pretty clear indication of its quality. If it sounds like it could be something for you, then do check it out. It's on Steam. It's out now. It's in full version 1 release. But who do you prefer defending against? Peasants, zombies, or the royal army? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for making it this far in the video. Do consider dropping a like, a sub, a comment. I do tend to reply to most comments. I don't know if I meant to. Am I, am I meant to? I feel like I'm meant to. I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway. I hope you have a wonderful day. Do let me know if you end up uh, diving as deep into this game as I did. And I'll see you next time. Or right now, if you click whatever video is on screen. Okay, that's enough from me. This video is very long. Okay, bye, 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 bye.